I'd like to show you the fantastic five acrylic blending techniques. These are the same techniques I use in my portraits, my landscapes to develop a beautiful sense of shading, gradation, uh, to really make the portraits look alive and realistic. And it's something you can incorporate in your portrait right now, uh, even one that you've been working on for a while. And certainly you can use it on the portrait you're doing in this class. We're going to break it down to five different techniques. And I'm going to show you here on this white canvas. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use a half inch flat brush. And I'd like you to follow along in this exercise as well. Get yourself a white canvas or some kind of white surface. Give these techniques a try. And as you do them, just like I'm doing them here, it'll kind of cement it in your mind. And then you'll be able to incorporate that into your portrait painting or whatever other paintings you're working on. So um, technique number one is called segmented blending. And it's just like how, you know, if you think of ancient temples and you have these fluted um, pillars and you, you might have different facades of those pillars. Uh, they're flat, but they're kind of variegated. And um, there's a sense of dark to light. That's what we're doing here. We're creating um, a sense of blending from dark to light or one color to another color. And the way that you um, do this technique is, and where I'm going to show you here using romber dark, of course, <laughs> one of my favorite colors. And uh, I'm going to take just a pinch of that and we're going to uh, mix it into a little bit of matte medium and make a glaze that's, oh, maybe about 90% opaque, uh, something like that. All right, so. The idea is overlapping your glazes in strategic places. And that's how you really, first of all, develop a great sense of shading. So let's say we go ahead and we apply this and we're going to put it and I, and I have these numbers written here. You can see the different numbers. So this is uh, number one and I'm just going to basically apply an even layer here and notice how I'm brushing. Um, perpendicular in a couple different directions to really smooth it out. Now horizontal with the canvas, now vertical. And now we finish up with very light brushwork. I'm going to get a hard edge here just so I can show you how this technique works. All right, so you can see this close up what that looks like. And what we need to do in order to do this technique is to let it dry completely before applying the next layer. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go ahead and follow up with another layer and you'll be able to see the difference. All right, now it's completely dried and we're going to follow up with another layer right on top. And then I'll be able to demonstrate how this works. So same kind of glaze that you're going to want to get onto your brush. And then we're going to go ahead and reapply that. Now, if you needed to use a, a hair dryer to dry this quickly, that is definitely a possibility. Um, so keep that in mind, but making sure this is completely dry to the touch. Now we're going to follow up with another layer on top. And we're going to bring this next layer out past the first one. All right, so you can see as we apply this, how the layer ended up overlapping. And we're, you see where it overlaps, it gets a little bit darker. Actually, if I wipe this away on the top, you'll see Oh, it's actually a little lighter there. So where, where we have the layers overlapping, these two layers, it gets darker. And then where we have the one layer by itself, it's a little lighter. Um, and so that's how we develop a sense of blending is just by the strategic placement of the layers. So one layer on top of another, just like two pieces of stained glass together gets a little darker. Same thing with this. It gets darker where the two layers overlap and then where you have that layer exposed by itself without a layer underneath, it's a little bit lighter. 
And so that's what we call segmented blending. Now we're going to do the next blending technique, which is called the dilution glaze. All right, so with the dilution glaze, we're going to want to take um, a little bit of the raw umber dark and we're going to mix it with matte medium. Now I have to remix a little more because I used what I already had on my palette. And we're going to create another glaze similar to the first one, you know, about a 90% uh, matte medium, 10% paint. And what we'll do is we will apply that to number two here. And the same similar fashion, we're just going to brush this, make a nice diagonal kind of square. Most of my brush work I prefer to do at 45 degree angles. It's very comfortable for me. Uh, that's why I'm doing these kind of diagonal squares here. But with the dilution blending technique, what you're going to do is take this glaze, okay, make it as smooth as you can in application. Then you're going to wipe off the excess paint that's on your brush and you're going to dip your brush into pure matte medium, swirl it around. And then you're going to go back to that area and you're going to basically blend into the glaze you just did. Now it takes a little bit of brush pressure and then you have to ease up and go a little lighter as you get into it. And then you can blend it out and then use less pressure on both this end where you're trailing off and on the edge where you're trailing into your application takes a little bit of practice to get these techniques down so give yourself some time and uh, practice to try it out but you'll notice how it's darker up here where we don't have any of that application disturbed notice i only brought my brush up about two-thirds of the way in i didn't go all the way into it and then i basically obscured the edge and blurred it out by using some aggressive brushing at that edge of that first application and then I kind of trailed away uh, to fade off the edge. Now you can use this technique on a white canvas but it actually works even better when you have many many layers on your painting. So the more layers you have the better the effect because you have the cumulative uh, effect of all the other layers underneath that are kind of working that out and making it come together. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, now, the next technique that we have is going to be the dab blending technique. The dab blending technique. So for this, and we're going to do that same kind of glaze, just get more of that loaded up on your brush. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply that on our canvas in a similar way. Okay, get a nice application here going perpendicular strokes to smooth it out. When you have a lot of paint loaded on your brush, you really have to blend it quite a bit to get it smooth. See, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, and then using very light pressure, changing the angle of the brush to really get that smooth. Now with the dabbing technique, what you do to soften up the edge is you just kind of use your finger and literally pull away some of the paint. Pull away some of the paint, and you kind of dab it out. And this technique works better, not for larger areas. Like this technique will work better for large areas like backgrounds and, and the skies and, and uh, large areas on, on clothing, perhaps anywhere where you're going to have larger areas. But this technique works better on small areas like when you're um, painting a person's face and you maybe put a little bit too dark of an area on the wing of their nose or a uh, shadow under their eyebrow. You can just kind of lift it up a little, soften the edge, soften um, the application. In case you put down too much paint and it looks a little too dark, you just dab it and it lightens it right up. So again, you can see where that gets lighter right there. And that's with this dabbing technique. So that's just one more technique. The next, te next technique is dry brushing. So with dry brushing, it's, um, Similar to some of these other techniques, we're going to put an application down of raw umber dark and swirl it around, get a good amount on your brush. Let's go ahead and apply that on number four here. 
All right, we'll get a good application. And with dry brushing, you have to actually use up enough paint on your brush that you start running out of paint. You know, the paint gets stored up in the heel of your brush by the ferrule end of it. And if you paint enough, basically you start running out of paint. And then what happens is you kind of hear a sound where your bristles are, you know, hitting the canvas and you're just barely able to get any paint out. But notice what's happening as I apply my brush on the canvas where there's not much paint on the brush with a light amount of pressure and holding it kind of perpendicular to the canvas, I can create some really nice blending effects. And this is, uh, this is what dry brushing can do for you when you have a glaze. Now you'll find it very difficult to do this technique with opaque paint. Um, you just won't get that sense of shading that you can get when you have your, um, your paint mixed with matte medium to make it into a glaze. See how cloudy I can make this? And I, you can just develop beautiful cloudy effects for skies, um, for backgrounds, creating those nice sfumato, smoky backgrounds. And you just see, I can keep going and going with this. It's like there's always a little more paint left in your brush to uh to do this with now here's the thing if i take my brush and really push i can actually get a lot more paint to come out of it just by squeezing it and that's how you can actually then create um other kinds of cloudy effects where say in your sky you need to have one area that's a little darker you can push out more paint by using more pressure and then go ahead and do your lighter approach and more of a perpendicular angle and you can continue to blend. When I squeezed it out, I had my brush more uh, parallel to the canvas. Now it's more perpendicular and I'm blending out. And that is your dry brushing technique. It's, it's a wonderful technique that you can employ when you're glazing. Now we have one more technique that is basically your traditional kind of blending technique that you can do whether you're painting opaquely or with glazing. But in my paintings, even though I do the glazing technique, I still rely on a lot of opaque methods and I mix them together to make my painting have as much richness as possible. And so this last technique, technique number five, is just simply wet on wet blending. So for technique number five, um, I'm gonna demonstrate it more or less using uh, an opaque layer of paint. It probably won't be completely opaque, but it'll be pretty close. So we're going to take Romber Dark and we're going to go ahead and let's mix that with a little bit of titanium white just to get it lighter. It's going to give us a different tone because white cools things down. Okay, and that's, that white is going to make it pretty opaque. All right, so I'm going to apply this then right here in this area. And look how dark that is. It's amazing how dark that gets. I'm going to just lighten it up a little bit more using some more white. I just want it to be kind of similar to the rest of them. All right, so this is still quite a bit darker, obviously because it is opaque and that white tends to uh, promote that. But with this blending technique, we're just going to put in a nice diagonal pattern of paint. What we're going to do is smooth it out really nice. And then we're going to add titanium white to it. All right, so now we take that same color we had here and we're just taking what's already in our brush. We already have some of that color mixed in our brush, so I'm not adding any more. And it's going to create a very light color. And I'm going to add that right to this right side. It's going to be kind of a dirty white and off white. And then I can mix that in to the square using kind of some diagonal, slightly diagonal brush strokes. See, I can just blend that in, blend that in, use lighter pressure as I get towards the edge. 
right? And with that, I can create a nice sense of blending. And if I want to, I can even take it further, dip my brush in more white, go back, add that right here, and then get even more blending on this edge. As you can see, I can blend that all the way into a white canvas if I want to. Um, but that technique works well um, for various areas. You know, you can mix that technique with other techniques. You could add some uh, matte medium to it and kind of make it into a dilution blend like we have uh, with number two. Um, but that technique will work very well uh, for certain areas, even small areas on a person's face. If you're trying to get some small nuances, I use a combination of the you know four glazing techniques and then this fifth technique, which is more suited to opaque painting. I use them all. And again, that really helps to develop a beautiful uh, sense of shading, depth, and realism. And you can incorporate that in your portraits today. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. The fant fantastic five blending techniques that you can use in your paintings. Go ahead and try it out. And I would encourage you to um, you know, practice on this. Get yourself a white canvas, like I said. Try these techniques out. See what it can do for you. And then um, you know, you'll be able to employ that into your paintings. All right. Well, thank you for watching this. I'll see you in the next video.